Right. So um, thanks everyone for, for coming along and uh, thanks Phil for hosting the session. My name's Matthew Donison. I'm a lead consultant for EMEA for RIB Software. Um, we're part of the Schneider wider group um, and we make software for um, AEC firms, uh, end-to-end solutions, we have point solutions. And what I'm gonna take you through today is our product called i2 Costex. So let me just run through a, a brief PowerPoint presentation um, before we move on to the, the main demonstration. So RIB, we are a cloud first organization, AI first and mobility first. We've been around in various guises for 50 plus years. We're in 25 countries around the world and we have over 600,000 users of our software. Um, over 2,700 employees um, and we're listed on the TechDAX and SDAX markets. So the i2 Costex product um, at its heart, it's an on-screen measurement tool, both 2D, 3D, um, so whether you're just using very basic JPEGs or you're using PDFs or DWGs, right through to using uh, BIM models, whether it's from um, Revit or RVT format, uh, DWFX, IFC, uh, CPI XML, we support something like 21, 22 different formats that you can bring in, measure um, or extract the quantities from. Once you've taken those quantities out of the, the models or the drawings, we then have live linked workbooks so that you can automatically update the costs as and when your drawings change. So as you get new revisions from the architects or the design teams, you can then automatically just kind of measure the, the differences rather than starting again, and then it will update the costs and it will tell you exactly what the difference in cost is between the different revisions of the project. When you want to get that information out of the system, we have customizable reports. So it's fully flexible in terms of the reporting formats, the logos, contents pages, you know, et cetera. And you can also extract that information via APIs as well to feed it through into other systems. We have a, a tool as well called i2Benchmark so that you can upload your, your data into this sort of sanitized data warehouse within i2Benchmark. And then you can run benchmarking reports. You can prepare conceptual estimates from that information. If you want more information, um, you can visit our website on i2costex.com. And now let me take you into a demonstration of the SIF software itself. So what I have here is a very basic model. Um, it's a model that's come across as a DWFX format. It's being produced in Revit. So I've got both the, the model itself, and if I click on one of my 2D sheets, you can see um, you know, the, the 2D output that many people would be um, expecting. Incidentally, what I find a lot of the time speaking to people around the industry is they kind of say, oh no, I'm not getting models, um, but they actually do get uh, the 2D sheets. They just don't realize they come from a model in the first place. So common to many BIM viewing tools, um, you can firstly analyze, you can look around the model, you can kind of hide things, you can filter based on various objects. So I could say show only objects in say the walls, I can then filter that down. And I can also um, look through the various layers. So I can click on a wall, click on a roof and then hide that. The key thing really when, uh, as a kind of quantity surveyor estimator, when you receive these models is that you need to familiarize yourself with them, understand what's there, but more importantly, what's not there. Particularly at early design stages, you're not gonna be dealing with a complete model by any means. So you need to know what information can you extract from the model and which information are you gonna to have to revert to your more traditional 2D takeoff for. So, with this, let me uh, turn everything on again. So let me show all layers at the top. And then finally, if I go to the model tree, I can click down on a particular node, for example, the ceilings, I can then isolate that. If I open up the schedule down the bottom here, you can view all of the data that's attached to those visible objects on the screen. So from basic information like the name, so compound ceiling, family name, through to the dimension information, for example, 12 meters squared for that particular um, ceiling I was looking at there. If I scroll across to the right hand side, I've got some additional information you can see shown in yellow there. What the majority of our customers find um, is that when they get the models through, they've been coded 
in accordance with various industry standards, for example, uniclass codes. But the, the QS teams generally have to produce their cost plans in accordance with something like NRM1 um, in the UK or various other international standards. So what I've done here is I've actually supplemented the model with additional information. So if you can have NRM1 codes in the model from the architects, then you know it will help speed up the process. But if you don't, it's no problem because in I2Costex, we can supplement that data that you can see here. And once the data is in the model, we can then use it as part of our quantity extraction. So I'll just hide that schedule again, and I will view all of the objects. So if I want to, I can ignore all of that data. Under my dimensions ribbon, I can switch into a point mode and I can click around the four corners of a wall if I want to. So if I just want to measure the pure physical geometry uh, and ignore the data that's attached there, then I can do. Um, and in certain, certain circumstances, that, that may be what you want to do. And also I, I find it's quite a good step when you first receive these models just to do some checking. For example, sometimes you need to evaluate whether any voids or openings in slabs or walls are included or excluded from the area measures. Depending on your measurement standard, you may measure across an opening or you may deduct for that opening. So you need an understanding of whether that information has been included or excluded. And that depends on the software that's produced the model. It depends on the file format that's been used as part of the data exchange. So it's well worth verifying that information. Once you've carried out those initial steps and you're happy with everything, we can then move on to the automated extraction. We have two different approaches. Firstly, BIM templates. They are supplied with the software. So as soon as you install the software out of the box, you can run a BIM template and it will extract all of the data within the model and it will structure it in folders down here on the left hand side. But what that does is it structures the information in accordance with the way the model's put together. So for example, you would have a folder of doors, if I'm just looking at the model tree now, and all of my doors would be in there, no matter if they're internal or external doors. If you want more customization of the way that data comes in, so if you wanted to, say, split it by internal or external doors, or if you wanted to split it down by the level of the building that those doors sit within, we have our model maps. And these are templates that you can set up and you can keep running them model after model. And you just define, similar to a pivot table in many ways, exactly where you want the data to be placed. So I'm running through that model now. Traditionally, if I had the 2D drawings to measure from, um, then it might take me several days or weeks, depending on uh, how rusty I am at the 2D measure, um, to do a quantity extraction from that and produce a cost estimate. But what I'm doing here is I can do it in a matter of minutes, really. So it's finished the quantity extraction now, and it's just preparing my dimension groups. And any second, they're going to appear on the left-hand side. What is key is that we can link the 2D and the 3D information together. So I can check, I can carry out QA checks of the quantities that have been extracted. I can supplement that with the 2D takeoff if I need to. So if we have a look down here on the left-hand side, if I have a look at something like NRM1 Co 2.8, look at my internal doors, I can then isolate that folder and we can see those are the internal doors in question. And each one of those has been assigned a code which links up with my rate libraries within the I2Costex system. So if I have a look down something, as, for example, the frame as well, I can right click, isolate that folder. And there we go, we can see that frame is shown there. So if I now jump across to my 2D sheet, you can handily see all that information is marked up there. So that was the, that's the frame we're looking at. If I clicked on the internal doors, you can see they're shown there, internal walls and petitions, they're all shown there as well. And each one of those I can hover over and it will tell me what it is. So it gives me the dimension name, in this case, MD0180. Um, it tells me the information related to the grouping, the zones, if I've set zones up. In this, this example, I'm not using those. And I've got the area as well. 
So as I mentioned before, you can supplement this 3D measurement with some 2D takeoff if you need to as well. But what I'm gonna do now is jump across into my workbook view because we have all that takeoff already carried out. I haven't got workbook in there at the moment, so I'm gonna add a workbook from my dimension groups. I'll just give it a name. So very simply, I'm gonna call it estimate. I tell it which rate library to use because you can have lots of different rate libraries within the system. And the descriptions are gonna come from my rate library because 2.8.a, whatever it was, doesn't really make sense. So the system is gonna replace those codes with the full description. So I press okay. I2 Caustics runs through, populates the workbook, and it looks up the costs. So we can see based on my rate library and based on the quantities that have been extracted from the model, we have an estimate cost of 4.9 million. So if I was to look into, say the internal doors that we were previously looking at, you can see it's grabbed the descriptions associated with each group, whether it's an internal door, fire rated, whether it's glazed, you can see the quantities and you can see the rate that we have in the library for each. You're then free to supplement these costs with anything else you need to. You know, this is just the cost from that model. So if there's any additional information you need to input, you're free to do so. And everything in the workbook is live linked back to the drawing. So if you want to know where certain things come from, you can very easily check that. So if I was to look at my frame and say, I want to understand where these steel columns come from, what I can do is click on that item, show the source, and it takes us back and it highlights it for us. So you can kind of see if I zoom out slightly, it's, it's highlighted those columns in, in green. Um, they're kind of shown against the blue, so it's not so easy to see, but you know, you can trace everything back from your workbooks to either your 3D or your 2D takeoff as applicable. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you get any revised models, revised drawings, you can run a revisioning process to understand where the cost difference has occurred. So hopefully that's um, been a, a useful overview for people. It's been brilliant. It's not been useful, it's been fantastic. I haven't seen such a range of functionality with an integration as slick as that into Excel uh it's very very good very impressive so um thank you thank you so much for sharing that matthew i'm sure it was uh enjoyed by the some 290 people that are <laughs> online with us now so yeah man well done love Thanks it when a people lot. demonstrate software live